ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise him azza wa jal for his blessing we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his pleasure as a riba in dunya and here and hereafter Allah ma'amin ya rabbal alameen we usually every Saturday we talk about the sahaba of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam last time we talked about sahabi abu darda radiallahu anhu but tonight might be the last night of sha'ban Allah knows best so Ramadan is very close, maybe tomorrow. The, I mean, the not the day, but the night. Uh, so inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to talk about the ahkam siyam. It's very important. The rulings of the fasting. And we're going to get that from the summary, Muqtasar, Kitab al-Siyam, in Fiqh al-Muyassir, Muyassir. Uh, summary of the book of fasting from Al Fiqh Al Muyassar for the easy Fiqh and understanding of the, of the Fiqh in Islam from some of the scholars that have made this book, Sheikh Salih Ali Sheikh, and some others. So, starting with what is fasting? Ta'ari, what is the definition of fast? As Suyam is abstaining from eating and drinking and all other. Things that break the fast with the intention from the beginning, from the dawn, uh, the dawn to the sunset. That is fasting or the siyam. What are the pillars of the siyam? Number one, the pillar of the siyam is to abstain from eating and drinking and everything which breaks your fast from the dawn to sunset. And the the belief for this or the evidence for this. Is the words of Allah in the Quran. فالآن باشروهن وابتغوا ما كتب الله لكم وكل وشربوا حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل. سورة البقرة. آية 187. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Now you have intimate relationship with your wives. وابتغوا ما كتب الله لكم and and seek whatever Allah has written for you from the offsprings. وكل وشربوا Eat and drink until the white, uh, what do you call it? No, it's not string. Thread. Thread, the white thread, yes. The white thread, it's distinct uh, from the black thread. And that what is meant here, it is. The, the the night and the and the day the the the, the light of the fajr and the dawn then you complete the fasting till the night which is near the sunset so here what this means when khayt al abyad wal khayt al aswad it means bayad al nahar the sawad al layl it is the light of the day and the darkness of the night and you remember the story of the sahabi that he put two threads, and will keep looking under the, the pillow and keep looking so until it is it's clear for him. And the Prophet Sallallahu explained to him, Radiallahu Ta'ala. The second pillar of, of the fasting is what? Al niyyah, the intention. An intention to make the intention. I'm doing that for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as ibadah for Allah Azza wa Jal. The dalil, the evidence for this is the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, innamal amal bin niyyad. Indeed, deeds are according to the intentions. And for every person, he will have whatever he intended, meaning what the reward he would uh, he intended. Now, the intention, we're going to talk at the end, but intention is very important to be done every single night. It's very important to be done every single night, every uh, the night for intention. Uh, the Jumhur of the scholars, Madhab al Hanbali, Shafi, and uh, Hanafi, they say has to it has to be done every single night. Only in Malikiyah, they say it's enough for the whole month. But the most correct opinion is the first one has to be done for every single night before the Fajr 
to make the intention. You made the intention before Fajr, before you slept, and you wake up, and you didn't eat so hold. Alhamdulillah, you made the intention before Fajr, so no problem. You can continue the fasting. What is the hukum? What is the ruling of the fasting? Obviously, we know fasting is one of the pillars of Islam, and it is an obligation. The evidence for it is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and the Ijma. What are the conditions of the fast? For conditions for the fasting to, to become obligation on the person. Al Islam, the person should be a Muslim in order for him to uh, be uh, the fasting to be accepted from him and to be an obligation for him and to be accepted because the, the psalm is a ibad. And the ibad is not to be accepted from a person who is not Muslim. Number two, that he reached the age of uh, al bulu or puberty. Uh, the Prophet and the, the pen doesn't write for three people, and he mentioned among them the person who the, the child who didn't reach their age of puberty that he had that uh, that is it is not considered obligation on him. Number three, al aql the person is sane, sane insanity, that he is not uh majnoon, crazy or uh, disabled, uh, the mentally ill. And the, and the same is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And he mentioned among them the person who is mentally ill until he uh, become uh, sane. Al-Sihha, health person, he is healthy. The person who is sick, Allah Azza wa Jalla has not made an obligation on on him. Allah says, whoever is sick or he is traveling, then he has to make up other days. Al iqamah residence, meaning that he has to stay, see, he's a person who is not traveling. And the, and the, and the hadith that we just mentioned, that, but if the person who is traveling, he fasts, what happens? Is his fasting accepted or no? Yes, it is, no problem. But it said to make it's not an obligation on him to fast, but if he fasts, there is no problem, inshallah. And number six, this is for the sisters that uh, they are not in the time in the time of the period or the midst uh, or in the time of uh, giving like after giving uh, birth. So because it's not accepted fasting in, for them. The other issue is how can we uh, decide or Muslims decide for the beginning of the new new month of Ramadan? And as we know, it, it, it happens by citing the Hilal, citing the, the crescent. And a person sees it or with somebody else. And he then informs the people uh, that the, they have seen the, the the moon the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said or the after the ayah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala faman shahida minkum ash-shahra falyasum whoever seen from among you the month of ramadan let him uh, fast and the, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said idha if you see fast so you seen it by by yourself or somebody else seen it and he's trustworthy uh, and Sadiq, and he uh, speaks, speaks, the, speaks the truth, then we fast. Hadith ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, akhbartu al-Nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ru'yati Ramadan fasama wa amara al-nasa bi siyami. I told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I informed him that I have seen the moon, and he fasted, and he commanded and, uh, the people to fast. If, a, if the hilal, the crescent, is not to be seen, or no uh, person like gave, gave so you didn't see it yourself, or no person gave the shahada the with the testimony that he has seen that that we're supposed to complete the month thirty days, supposed to complete the month thirty days shaban, and uh, that's the the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He mentioned waqtun niyyah fi sawm wa the time for the niyyah, the intention that we just mentioned, uh, it is an obligation for the, the person to make the intention for the fasting, and that it is from said from the pillars 
of the person, and that he should, should do it from the night, meaning that before the Fajr, and uh, that's the Prophet said, Man lam qabl al -fajri, fala -siyama la. Whoever did not make an intention for fasting before Fajr, there is no fasting for him. There is no fasting for him. So a person, he wakes up, he didn't make the intention during the day, and he make he wakes up, he, and uh, not for support, he wakes up after the, the, the dawn of the Fajr, then for him, there is no fasting in in that day, right? the fasting, except if a person, uh, there, there is difference between obligation, obligatory fasting, and fasting which is voluntary. So fasting which is voluntary, it's allowed for you to make intention, even if you don't, if you don't eat until Duhr time, until Duhr time, because that it came from the son of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't find food. One day he entered his house and he said, mind the kumichi, don't you have anything to eat? And uh, then was uh, and the answer was no. And he said, so I said, I'm fasting. So that, that is what it is for the not obligate, obligatory fasting, but for the fasting which is voluntary. What are the reasons that we can justify for the person to not fast? Number one is al maradu wal kibar. Al marad, sickness and old age. So it's allowed for a person who is sick, the person who is sick, and we don't hope that he is going to be a chronic ill, a chronic ill uh, person, and there is no hope. Oh no, it's best, but there is no hope. Most likely that he is going to be uh, better and you're going to be cured from that disease. Or the person who is old, has lived in old age, it's very hard for him to fast. He can fast, but it's very hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed them to not fast and instead give meal, one meal for every day for one person is called al uh, So, So that's why the person who is sick, that is a chronic person, patient, and he cannot, is not uh, like most likely he cannot be cured from a disease. Uh, he will, will be like the old age person. So in this case, he doesn't have to make up. He doesn't have to make to make up this, but actually and he will give every single day a meal for a person. He might do that every single day, or he might give last day, like Anas bin Malik used to gather the masakim when he became old age and he couldn't fast, he used to gather the, the needy and would feed them 30 people for one day. So no problem. Uh, now, you can give it as food, or you can pay the money for them. You make sure that they're going to cook it. You give to the media themselves, and you make sure they're going to cook it, or you buy them the food for that. Or you can cook it yourself, and in all the, the things. Or you can give it somebody that you know, really, uh, that he's going to give it as a food for the person to be fed during the month of Ramadan. Number two, a safar, travel. As we mentioned, it is allowed and permissible for the person who is traveling to not fast. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ was asked one time about fasting while we're in, in, in traveling. And he said, If you like, you fast. If you don't, if you like, you don't fast. And it's, it's up to you. And the Prophet ﷺ, he came out in, from Mecca in Ramadan, كان صائما. فلما بلغ الكديد أفطر أفطر الناس صلى الله عليه وسلم. He صلى الله عليه وسلم he was fasting and then and uh, some part was hard for him صلى الله عليه وسلم and he broke his fast and all the people broke his fast with him. That's Sahih Bukhari. And it's allowed the fasting in the long travel. Uh, which type of travel? Any the travel that allows for you to make fasr, to uh, shorten your salah. That is a type of travel that has all the ahkam, the rulings of traveling. So it allows you to uh, make short salah, the short, to shorten the salah. It allows you to uh, break your fasting. And uh, that's in the safar, 
the traveling is a, a traveling that it is mubah, it's something permissible. Some people, the some or the scholars say that the, the travel, if you are traveling for a not legal, like not Islamic purpose, or something which is haram to commit a ma'siyah, so that doesn't allow you to take, you don't want to take the rukhs of Allah and to commit a sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's so it's not allowed any time, not only in Ramadan, but even outside in, in Ramadan, of Ramadan. Prophet he said, Laysa min al -birri Now, it is not from the birr, righteousness, to fast in the travel. How can you understand this hadith while you're traveling? It is not from righteousness to fast while you're traveling. Why can't you understand the hadith? Well, you understand this hadith if it's hard on, on you, on the person in fasting. Then why you, you are hurting yourself? Allah has made it easy for you. So just take the, the, the easiness that Allah has given to you. You fast, you can make it up next for, for the purple uh, the person who doesn't fast, uh, the, and he is a traveler or a sick that we hope that you're gonna be cured. He does he doesn't give the fidya, but does he, what does he do? He will make it up when he becomes when he become when he comes back. Home and after even after Ramadan, a person who becomes sick and he becomes better. The, the women who are pregnant or breastfeeding, nursing. So here there are two opinions of the scholars. Uh, actually, so one opinion of the scholars is that if the pregnant woman she is, uh, or uh, the, pregnant, uh, the, the pregnant woman, or the, the breastfeeding or the nursing woman, if uh, they if, if they are uh, afraid or to hurt themselves, or the, the, their, their children is allowed for them, is allowed for, for them to break their fast. Now, one opinion is that in here, it's allowed for them to break a fast, but they have to make it up. The second opinion, with, which is the, the opinion that I see as more correct and Allah knows best is that they are not supposed to make it up but uh, they are supposed to give fidya and that's based on the, on the words of Ibn Abbas that he put them the breasting the bre breastfeeding woman or the nursing woman and the pregnant woman in the same category as the person who is chronic ill and or the person who is old age so meaning that they have only to to make to give the fitya to uh, feed the, the the person who is fasting and not to uh, make it up and Allah knows best what does break the fast number 1 eating and drinking intention eating and drinking intention as we mentioned the ayah uh, before that uh, told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed for the person to eat and drink from the sunset till the dawn in Fajr. But from dawn to sunset, the person doing the during fasting, he has to stop uh, or to refrain from eating, drinking, and that. The Prophet ﷺ said, now what about the person who, who, uh, who forgets? Alhamdulillah, that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Man uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever forgets and that and eats while he is fasting so eats or drinks let him complete his fasting because indeed Allah Azza has fed him and Allah Azza has uh, given him drink alhamdulillah so the person might eat a full meal obviously if he forgets not to to, to say that I'm, I'm keep forgetting and just keep forgetting that keep eating the whole full meal in the middle of the day uh, no but alhamdulillah that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu Number two, which breaks the fast, is intimate relationship for married uh, people. And this is, it breaks the, the fasting. And for that, you need tawbah and istighfar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repentance to Allah azza wa jal, and has to uh, complete or make up that day. And the kafar, which is fasting, 60, or for fasting, is give a freeing a slave. How days days of sleep? If not, then it's fasting 60 days consecutively. So it's not easy. Fasting 60 days consecutively. And if not, then to feed 60 people. Then to feed 60 people.
Now, uh, and that is that is the scholars say that they made obligatory that to the 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 husband the, the man, but to complete to make up the, the day the woman too, because usually it starts from the man. This is happens. You're gonna have to pay for it. Then number four, the blood of menstruations uh, and uh, of the women after giving birth that will break the fasting. Obviously, so the the women they have to make it up other day. Number six, ridda apostasy. If a person becomes a disbeliever, leaves Islam, that he has to obviously uh, that it breaks up his fasting. What are some recommended things during the fasting? Most habat siyam. Number one, a suhoor. What's the difference between a suhoor and a suhoor? Fathan dam. A suhoor means the act or the action of eating food during the before the fajr time, before the dawn. A suhoor, it's the meal that you eat. So the action that you are eating, you wake up, you prepare food and everything you're eating is called a suhoor, a tasahha. Okay. But a suhoor al fatha, it means the meal that you eat. The same thing, al wudu. What does it mean al wudu? The action, the ablution, all the steps. Al wudu fatha, wudu, the water that you make wudu with. So the Prophet said, Tasahharu fa inna fi suhuri baraka. Eat the pre dawn meal, which is suhur, because there is baraka, there is blessing in the suhur. Even if you eat a little bit, even if you just drink a little bit of water, you wake up and drink a little bit of wa wa water, that alhamdulillah, you have gain, uh, gained the baraka of the suhur, inshallah ta'ala, by the blessed time. It's a blessed time, the angels. Are there to make you make dua and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, delaying the suhoor is sunnah that recommended from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa hadith of Zayd ibn Thabit. Tasaharna ma Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thumma kumna ila salati, kult kem kana qadhuma baynuma, qala khamsina ayah. We eat eight suhoor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we uh, prepared to pray. We said, what was the, the time of lapse or what, what is the time between, between them? He said, the time was around 50 eyes, like how much you can recite 50 eyes, like around 15 minutes, maybe. That the time between the suhoor and the adhan. Then uh, number three is hastening the fitr, breaking your fast. So as soon as the adhan, or you see the sun set, it is from the sun of the problem, the opposite of delaying the suhoor, which means to keep it close to the fajr time, and eating uh, fast or hastening the, the break of the fast is at the uh, right after sunset. That's the son of the Prophet. Salsam. He said, The people will still continue to be upon goodness as long as they hasten uh, to break their fast. Number four, to eat iftar or to break your fast with fresh dates. If not, tamarat, dry dates that we have. If not, and, and sunnah to be with them, to be an odd number. And if not, then water or milk you can have. But the hadith came from, they came that uh, the first was rutabat, and second was bright uh, dates, and third was mentioned water. But anything, you can break the fast after that. Uh, the number five is the dua to be done as, while we're breaking our fasting is because it's a very, uh, or any dua that you do, especially the whole day of the fast. But even in the moment of the fasting, is a, that you can make dua, and Allah Azza wa Jalla will accept that dua. He said, Three people, Allah will not uh, uh, send back or, or, or their, their dua or accept their dua, the, the fasting person, until he breaks his fast. You see? It didn't say at the moment of, of breaking the fast. It said the fasting until so all day, you have plenty of time to make dua to Allah. But especially in the break, in the time breaking the fast, it's uh, another blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six is to make a lot of sadaqah, to, to uh, feed the people, 
uh, who are fasting and a lot of good righteous uh, deeds. Ibn Abbas he said, the Prophet وسلم, he was the most generous of the people with goodness and he was the most generous in Ramadan when Jibreel was come to meet him and to review the Quran and uh, every night of Ramadan and, and they would that is the Quran and they review the Quran. Rasulullah uh, he was more generous than he, the, 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 the breeze or the wind. Number seven, it is jihad, like uh, striving to do more ibadah in the qiyamul uh, layl or praying during the night. Number eight, making umrah in Ramadan. It's from the son of the Prophet Sallallahu and has a great reward. What's the reward? Prophet Sallallahu said, umratun fi Ramadana ta'dilu hajjatan. Umrah made in Ramadan is equal like hajj. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That's a great reward. You can go, but I will not find anybody pray behind you. But you can go. May Allah make it easy for you, uh, inshallah, uh, to go. And uh, one of the adab, great adab of the fasting is to maintain patience because actually the reward for fasting is the patience. And to say if the person is talking uh, foul language and, he, and, he, and he's uh, tired, trying to fight with, with with you or something, say in me saw in in me own saw in. I am fasting. I am fasting. Make the person think for, about that. What are some things which are disliked of fasting? Number one is an mubalagh al madmada madmadi wal wal istinshaq. That when you are making wudu or having or making wusul. And obviously, when you make it before, when do uh when you're putting like a lot or the or the water, we're making the and yeah in, in, in your mouth, and uh or you're uh, sniffing the, the 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 water in your nose too much. That's sunnah every other day, but while you're fasting, no, don't do so because you're uh, afraid maybe the water can enter inside, you can swallow water, or you can sniff the water inside. You just do it normal, like we're uh, swishing the water in your mouth, and that's it. But don't don't make it uh, don't make it to pass your throat. Uh, for the person who is married, it is disliked for the per, uh, to uh, the, the, the the kissing of uh, his his wife, even if he cannot control his his desire. Uh, swallowing the phlegm. Why? Because. And you, you may, you may uh, reach your, the, the one way to swallow you and inside you have it. You try to take it out, try to take it out. If you even keep it rain, that, that might break your fast. So the, the phlegm, don't swallow the phlegm, take it out. If it came out, if it's just keep staying in the throat and it didn't come out and in your mouth, there is no problem, inshallah. And it's because what can you do? But if you come out from the throat and he is in the mouth and then you swallow it, that's break the fast. Uh, tasting the food for the person who needs to taste the food. The cook, for example, and you need to taste the food, for the, but make sure that he let him make sure or her make sure that does not swallow. Making up the fasting. If a person he uh, missed one day because of a traveler or uh, he was sick, as we said before, he can he will make uh, up the fasting. But what about the person who did not fast? He had no excuse. He just did not fast one day or more than one day. He has to make tawbah to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and he has stopped and he seek forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and that because it's a very enormous uh, sin and then uh, obviously has to make up that day or days that he did not fast. From the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is the etikaf, as you know, uh, he Sallallahu Alaihi made etikaf and uh, and the best is the etikaf the last 10 nights, but you can make even a whole. Uh, ma, and that's it saying in the message doing a bad to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Used to pat that way. What's the you're gonna explain those inshallah, maybe in the last 
10 nights, but I just want to go over some other points, inshallah, very, very fast, because what does it break the fast? Because these are very important. So, number one, smelling or applying liquid base for fumes or incense doesn't break the fast. Okay, so don't be scared. It doesn't break the fast. Number two, bleeding from the mouth or nose does not break the fast. So people that think that. using an inhaler does not break the fast. Removing a tooth does not break the fast. Undergoing a blood test does not break the fast. Masturbation is haram and breaks the fast. Two, nose drops does not break the fast. Nose bleeds does not break the fast. Tasting food, we said, doesn't break the fast. Lying, swearing, or using bad speech does it or does not? Does not break the fast. Obviously, it's not allowed, it's not permissible. That you may you may get nothing uh, from the fasting, or from because Allah doesn't like that. The actually, as he said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the person who doesn't leave the falsehood and speak and acting upon it, he does not gain from it except hunger and thirst. So, doesn't get away, but doesn't break the fast. Uh, intimate relationship, he said, breaks the fast. Wet dream or waking up junuk from relation the night before does not break the fast. But remember to make the intention. Well, using toothpaste or mouthwash does not break the fast, but make sure that you don't swallow. Make sure that you don't swallow. Vomiting does not break the fast. Kissing and hugging, we said, does not break the fast. Cutting hair or trimming the nails. Some people think that it's like a hedge. It doesn't break the fast. Having a shower or bath does not break the fast. Applying hand does not break the fast. Swimming or diving into water does not break the fast, but make sure a person, if he's swimming in a swimming pool or goes to the beach, obviously don't go to the beach in the bottom, and that's because there are a lot of people, but uh, make sure that you don't swallow the water. Intentionally eating or drinking, we just said, Breaks the fast. Cutting, hijab. There are two opinions of scholars here. One is that it breaks the fast, and the second one is it doesn't break the fast. I go with the opinion that it does not break the fast, Allah knows best, because there are two hadiths uh, regarding that. Uh, but you can take whatever you want. Taking an aesthetic injection doesn't break the fast. Nutritional injections, yes, it breaks. Uh, serum, uh, it breaks the fast. Using cosmetics or makeup does not break the fast, but sisters, they should not use cosmetics or makeup outside. Inside the house, no problem. Outside, front of the people, that is a different issue. They should not use those. Eye drops doesn't break the fast. Eye drops, insulin injection does not break the fast because it's not nutritious. It's, it's just replacing something which is supposed to be, uh, 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 to be done by the, the body regularly on that. So these are things that uh, people, they think that breaks the fast and uh, doesn't break the fast. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to grant us beneficial knowledge. Ask Allah azza wa jal to uh, make this Ramadan a blessed Ramadan for all of us to make us reach from Ramadan to Ramadan to make us of those who pass during his, uh, this month and with the uh, intention and the help and for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with faith and to accept uh, our deeds Allah ma'amin ya rabbil alameen Allah ma'abalikum Ramadan wa ja'ana min suhaan wa tuwami la ilaha ilaha min suhaana kunna kunna min Allah ameen ya mu'qalib al-qulub thabit qulub al-madinik wa ya mu'sarik al-qulub sarik qulub al-mutahum اللهم أنجع عبادك المستضعفين في غزة وفلسطين وفي وفي السودان وفي كل مكان يذكر باسمك كريم اللهم كلهم ولا تكن عليهم أنصرهم ولا تنصر عليهم اللهم يا رب العالمين الحمد الحمد موتاهم وتقبل شهداءهم اللهم دعوا جرحهم وأطعم جاءهم يا رب العالمين 
اللهم يسر لهم يا رب العالمين اي اللهم يسر لهم يا رب العالمين في هذا الشهر المبارك يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم عليك باعدائك اعداء هذا الدين الصحيح الظالمين يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بهم زينهم لا يجزونك اللهم خذهم اخذ عزيز مقتدر واجعلهم عبرة لمن يعتبر اللهم لا تحقق لهم غاية ولا ترفع لهم راية يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكل لنا إلى أنفسنا ترفع عين صلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى صحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك